We refer to these things as latches or we refer to them as, uh, as flip-flops. Now, what we do with flip-flops is they have several functions in life. Uh, most of your, your counters are made out of flip-flops, but we need, a computer would be nothing if we couldn't store stuff. So there's constantly a need to be able to store stuff, right? That we can do what? That we can go back and look up later. So here I've got a push button on my, on my computer. I press that push button and then the computer will eventually do what? It will turn off, right? Or if I come up here and hit it, it will do what? It will turn in. I, it's not like a light switch where I got to go over and flip a switch. I have to leave that switch on. What we're doing here would be like me going over there and flipping the switch to on and then flipping it down and it would, and the lights would do what? They would stay on until I did what? Until I came up there and did what? Flip it again. So what we're dealing with on these push buttons, it has two functions. I use the same button to do what? I press it to do what? Turn it on. And I press it to do what? Turn it off. It's not like a light switch where you flip it up and flip it down. So if it would, if it had a flip flop on it or if it had a latch, I could flip it up and it would turn it on and I could flip it up and it would turn it off, which is pretty neat. So our, our flip flops are our memory servers. So this computer has <laughs> all this memory in it and there are just thousands and thousands and thousands of little latches or little flip flops. Another problem we had, we have, and I can't simulate it on this. I'll have to get a good analog scope is that when I come over here and press a push button, so y'all hear me over here typing. I can type pretty fast, right? I'm beating on these keyboards. <laughs> uh, the problem is, is that when we bring these push buttons down, we have metal on metal contact. So what happens when I press that push button down, guess what happens? This thing literally, if, if I got a really good scope, what would I find? Uh, let's say uh, I come over here and do this. So this is the normally the way we do a push button in digital. Because I can't come up here and do this. So let's say this is a good old 74 LSO4 which is a TTL, uh, it's a good old TTL inverter. So if I press the button, what would I get out? If I press the button, what would I get out? If I press the button, there's five volts. If I press the button, what would I get out? It's an inverter. If I press the button, what would I get out? I mean, good gracious. I would get a what? Okay, but a low. Let's use low. Uh, zero is a logic is a logic level. A low is a state, right? So a zero could either be a, could be voltage or not voltage. So that's why we use high and lows a lot. Okay, so let's say I come over here and open the button. What would I get out? Who says hi? Well, you're wrong. It would give me a low. So I would have a low all the time. Because a floating input of a TTL gate. So if I push that button, I'm putting a legal high in, but I'm not putting a legal what? Low in. Y'all understand that? So I, if I, if the put button, if the push button is not pressed, it's a floating input. If the push button is pressed, I get a legal high. And this is why you need to know what the legal levels are, right? Y'all can understand that. So that's why when we connect push buttons, we usually connect them like this. Push buttons are switches. So I can show you the, 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 the switches that's on the trainer that you get highs and lows. And this is the circuit that's up there. So now if I press that button, what do I get? I get a legal watt if the button is pressed. 
What do I get, folks? If I press that button over here on the left, okay, so if I press that button on the left, I get a legal low. Is it less than 400 millivolts? Yeah, it's connected to what? It's connected directly to circuit common. If I come over and don't press that button, then that pull-up resistor right there, which has VCC up there, will give me a legal watt. Will give me a legal high. So this is the way we connect push buttons and switches in digital. We usually flip it between ground and watt and a pull-up resistor. Because that way we get a legal watt high and we get a little low. <coughs> so if you're an engineer and you do that, you're definitely not going to have a job very long. <coughs> you go out and make a billion of these cards and none of, the, none of those push button works and your service technicians out there are changing out push buttons because they don't have any sense either when it's the engineer's fault, right? You understand? Are we okay? Uh, now we could do this also. <coughs> but normally we do it this way right there. So if I don't have the push button pressed, then I'd get a legal low. If I press the push button, then we get a legal high. So both those situations right there would work. But what happens when I press that button is if I look right there at that gate, if I, if I press it real slow, it'll probably be okay. But if I pop it like most people do, then what we would see is it would go low and then it would do this. And so we call this contact bounce. And all switches do that. All mechanical switches bounce when they're open or they're closed. And it happens on a light switch. But we have no problem with light switches because this is over here. You know, this, this whole thing right here might be over in one millisecond. In one millisecond, the Alabama power is like an eternity, right? So we have no problem with snap switches. But on a computer... By George, where these propagation delays are two nanoseconds, ten nanoseconds, then what that, those counters will see is it will see every one of those bounces as a watt, as a as a one. So I press, I come over here and I press a button on a counter, and I hit it one time, and my counter and my PLC counts fifteen counts. That wouldn't be good, right? I got a snap switch up there. See, you can hear those suckers snap, 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 right? You understand that? I flip that sucker down and my counter counts five. And I did it how many times? One time. So that PLC has a circuit in there that debounces those keys. Usually it's a computer. A computer usually does it by software. And what they would do is when, it, when the first bounce went by, they would put a time delay in there that would delay it before it accepted it as a legal zero or a legal one. Uh, when the Radio Shack TSR, uh, TSR Model 80 came out, uh, they put a time delay in there, but to, to, to get it real fast, they made the time delay real short. And what would happen is the longer you had your keyboard, the worse the bounce got, because the software didn't take care of it, right? You understand? So what happened with the keys when they got wore out, the bounce would last longer, and it got out of the, it got past the, the time delay that the program had in there. And the only option you had was to replace the keyboard. So now they do it a different way. Now they, now they debounce it uh, using a hardware method instead of a software method. So all your keys bounce. So I'm up here going <laughs> on this keyboard. When I hit that key, it goes down there and hits that bottom. Does what? Bounces off, comes back down, and it takes a little while for that to settle down. But I, no matter how fast I type, these keys have to be what? They're debounced. And we do that with little uh, debounce circuits. So the first latches we look for, and these guys here are used lots, and their main, one of their main functions is to debounce, is uh, what we call tieback NANs and tieback NORs. Cross-coupled, uh, we call these SR latches for set resets. Uh, they're asynchronous, so, so they're that, that means they're not timed with the clock. So they occur when the input occurs. 
And then, uh, so we got a cloth couple knowers, and so these are cross couple knowers. I don't know what figure number this is in your book. And they're called cross couple because look what we look what we do. We take or they take the output of one and feed it back into one of the inputs of the other. And what does these guys right here say? They say any high equals a what? So what I'm going to do is, uh, they've got stuff right here. I'm going to come over here and redraw these so we can put our own signals on here. These only work with NANs and NORs, though, so you got to have the... So we, we have cross-coupled we have cross -coupled NANs and cross-coupled ORs. Or NORs. Now what we're going to do on this guy is we're going to let these two inputs are going to have generic names. And what do they call the top one right here in your book? They call it S or R. Where's the set in the book? I need to go get my little book and look that up for you. So latches, flip-flops, I don't know what the chapter's label, but what chapter is this? Huh? Fourteen. Is this in? Huh? Chapter ten. And you should have this figure in here. And they've got the inputs. So this one they're calling set. This one they're calling reset. Now look at the outputs. We have two outputs. So right off the bat, if you look at the pin out of a chip, and you see cues and you see not cues then this guy is some type of latch, some type of flip-flop. So we can buy these uh, integrated, or we can buy the, 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 or, the, or, uh, the NOR gates and connect them together. So the set is on the top and the Q is on the bottom. So let me go back to, and this is why they're called SR latches, so S and R. Now, when we talk about setting and resetting a latch, we're talking about the Q, the, the output label Q. So when a latch is set, the Q will be equal to 1. When a latch is reset, so this is set, reset, when we reset the latch or the flip-flop, the Q will be equal to a 0. So when we talk about whether a latch is set or whether a latch is cleared or what so a set when we're talking about what we're talking about the Q output but the other output the other one so this is the Q down here so if this guy right here goes to a one I put a bar above it excuse me because I was thinking about the other one if this output right here goes to a one then we say the latch is what set or the flip-flop is set What's the other output called? Not Q. So, if the Q, out, if the Q output is a 1, what is the not Q? A 0. If the Q output is a 0, what is the not Q? A 1. So, the not Q and the Q are always equal to each other. But when we say a latch is set or reset, we're not talking about the not Q output because they think they, you have enough sense to figure out what's going on on the not Q, we're talking about what? The Q output. <laughs> so let's say I come up here and I bring both these inputs to a zero. <laughs> what's going to happen? <coughs> so this is what we would do. We would come up here and we would put a resistor right here and we would pull the input down or we would connect it to the output of another logic. What would the Q and the not Q output be? 
So what would the what would the Q output be? Would the lights be set or would the light, lights be reset? These are latches. They store stuff. So what happens when we first throw power of them, they come up in what we call an ambiguous state, which means they we don't know how they'll come up. Okay. So the problem is, is if I put a zero out there, that don't tell me anything. Because it says what? It says any high gives me a low. So I don't know, because now we're depending on what happens on the on the output of these these circuits, right? One of them is going to flip. So what's going to happen? This guy here, this may come up a one, or this guy right here might come up a one, right? You understand? But we don't know which one's going to do that. So this is why when you turn on when you turn on uh, latches, a lot of times they'll have a reset and a clear on them. Because when you put power on to one of these flip-flops, they're going to come up what? They're either going to come up set or clear. Now, if it comes up set the first time, odds are it's always going to come up set. But then you could, that, we could go over to another guy and his will come up cleared all the time. So that's why we call it what? We call it an ambiguous state or it'll come up reset all the time. So what we do is we bring in inputs. So what would happen if I came over here and I put a 1 on my set and a 0 on my reset? Now I know what's going to happen. What should happen? As soon as I get that 1 right there, do I have any high? I mean, do I have any high? Okay, so what's the output going to do? It's going to go low. This low is cross coupled, comes around here. That right there goes to a what? Low. What does the output of this guy right here go to? Do we have all heights? Do we have any high there? Okay, so the output would go high. This is cross coupled and keeps that high right there. Now, when I bring this back to a zero, what's going to happen? Okay, so look, when this guy here came back and gave me that one, that means I have a solid one right there. Okay, so any high gives me a what? Low. This low is cross-coupled back to this one, and do I have any high over there? So the output will stay high, and it will stay high all the time, right? Any high gives me a low. So now this thing is what? It's, it's latch, or it's set. So how would I reset it? Yeah, we would come down here and we'd put a high on the reset, right? And then we would leave this set low. So now what would happen? Now I have any high, so what would happen instantly? This output would go low. Then this low comes back and cross couples. Now I don't have any high on that top one up there anymore. So its output would go to a one. So the latch would be reset. So when the R goes high, the latch resets. When the set, when the set goes high, the latch sets. So when we say it's set, we're talking about what output? We're talking about the Q output. So let's say I come up here and connect this guy right here to a push button. And we do what we did before. I come over here and put. So here, since we got to have that pull down resistor right there, then what we would do is we would use this technique right here. So I come up here and I hit that push button. It comes down here. The thing comes up here and does this. Of course, then it, it would do that. Right? You understand that? It would have contact balance. So what would happen 
is uh, I'm sorry, it be, be just opposite. Let me let me erase it because the push button gives me a what gives me a high. So what would happen is when I press that button, what would happen is we would get this right here, and then it would eventually come up and settle down. Right? You understand? So I come over and hit to hit uh, press that button. This down, this guy down here, if it's not being used, it's got a watt on it. It's got a zero. So we're not, we never will press these two buttons at the same time. Because for one thing, there, it's impossible for you to press two buttons at the same time. So if you try to press two buttons at the same time, odds are digitally you're not doing what. One of them's going to be before. I mean, if, even if I look at my fingers, my fingers are different lengths. So if I come over and hit two buttons like that, automatically this button is going to do what? It's going to go first, right? You understand? So I press this button. So as soon as it does this, it goes to a one. As soon as that goes to a one, what does the output do? It goes to a zero. As soon as that goes to a zero, it's cost coupled back here, and this output right here would do what? It'd go high. Well, now it bounces back to a zero, so this goes to a zero. What would happen? How would I get a high? I got what now? I mean, I've got what now? No, something's going wrong. Hold on a second. Because it's not latching. I did something wrong. Hold on. Because it's supposed to latch when they go to zero. So I come over here and do what? So this goes high. That would put a high right there. That puts a low right there. That's our problem. But you cause this output to do what? Go low. When this goes low, what do I have on the bottom one? I have... Too low, so what would the output go? So this is the guy I forgot to put, so that right there would be what? High. Okay. So the switch bounces, this goes to a zero. What would happen? The output would still be low, right? The output goes to a high, what would happen? I mean, the input goes to a high. So here we got a bounce, right? Yeah. So what happens is, is, is this input can do what? It can bounce all over the place, but once it's set, it's what? It's set. So if I keep setting it, once it's set, it's set. So what will this thing do? It'll ignore the bounces. I mean, it just ignores them. And we would this would work the same way down here on the reset, right? You understand so if I come over and press the reset, the reset would do the same thing, but I'm not pressing that top button. So this right here would be a solid what? It would be a solid zero. So if I press the button, I would get a one. As soon as I get the one, what would happen? Then this output would go to a what? Zero. That would put me a zero right there. That would cause this to go to a one. Now I got a solid watt right there. I got a solid one, right? You understand? So the output goes down. So it goes to zero. I still have the one, which still gives me the low, which still gives me two lows up here, which still gives me the one, right? This goes to a one, which makes the output go to a zero, puts, keeps a zero up here, keeps the one. So the thing is what? The thing is last. So this is a basic debound circuit right now. There's a little more to it. But. So if I come up here and I look at the, uh, the schematics on the trainer. So we should have those on Blackboard, but I'll pull them up off the... Uh, uh, no, I don't want to do that. I'll pull, up, I'll pull it up off of the... Uh, Dots, digital, digital, oops, Let's see, handouts. Y'all see the trainer schematic? No, 
graphics. What have I done with that? Schematic? I got it somewhere, folks. Oh, schematics. Thought I had it in y'all silver. I'll have to find it and show it to you. We have two keys. Uh, we have two. Uh, we have two uh, switches that are debounced, and what I'm going to show you when I find the schematic is this same basic circuit is in there. So uh, when we look at our trainer. Uh, So these switches, these switches are not debounced. So right now we don't have any problem because we're using just basic logic, right? But later on when we move into counters, where that counter is counting every pulse, then you're not going to be able to use these switches right here on your on your counters because they're going to bounce on you. So that means you flip the count down, and instead of getting a count of one, you get a count of maybe three or four, right? Uh, these switches right here with these blue knobs, these are debounced right here. So they have the same basic circuit on there. So when you get your counters, what you'll do is you'll move over to these guys. And you can come over here and you can hit them just as hard as you possibly want. And you'll get a count of what? Of one, because they're what? They bit debounced. And they have this same little circuit in there. So that's the difference between these regular switches and these switches right here with the blue uh, blue caps on them. These are debounced. I think they're debounced by a tieback NAND. I'm not sure. They might but they basically work the same way. A tieback nor we set and reset it with highs. So what would you think we would do with a tieback NAND? Yeah, so a tieback NAND, we tie the two inputs high, we leave them high to cause it to latch, and then we input lows. Uh, so this shows me the tieback knower. You know, understand why we call it a tieback knower? Because they literally take the outputs and tie it back into one of your inputs. Uh, by the way, these only work. Uh, uh, we can use uh, multiple inputs to enable and disable. And we'll look at that in a minute. So let's see if we can figure this guy here out. So here we come along, and my set is a one. So what would happen? And I'm not looking at the, key, the not Q output. All I'm going to do is draw the Q output. Why don't we need to draw the not Q output right now? Because it's going to be what? Opposite of the Q, right? You understand. So if you understand what's going on with the Q output, then you know what's going on on the, on the not Q. It's just the inverted. So what would I do, folks? So I start off. I have what a set on the uh, the uh, on the so my set is a high, my reset is a low. So that will cause this guy here to go low. That will cause this to go low, right? You understand? So what's the not Q going to do? I mean, I'm sorry. The Q is going to go to a what? A one. Because we did what? What does S stand for? Set. And what does the R stand for? Reset. When we set it, what happens? Q equals to a what? One. When we reset it, Q equals to a what? Zero. So we set the latch. Well, here the set went high again. What's going to happen?
it's going to stay high, right? Because once it's set, you can set it a billion times. Once it's set, it's what? It's set. So what would happen? We'd come over here. Now what happens right there? Yeah, right at that edge right there, it's going to drop low. Now we pulse the reset a lot. So this would be a kind of a simulation of a, of a contact bounce. And that sucker would stay like that. So the outputs are not... The problem we have with these things is people want to swap the outputs when, when, when the inputs change, no matter if it's the set or the reset. You know, they're, they're thinking ands and ors, you know, when one of the inputs change, you know, something's going to happen. But these are not ands and ors. These are flip-flops or latches, and they're called flip-flops because what do they do? What does the Q output do? Yeah, the Q and the not Q outputs do what? They flip-flop. I call them latches because what do they do? They hold information. So once they're set, how long would it stay set? Till you reset it. Good. Are you okay there? Anybody got any questions on that? This is the basic element of all our latches, basic element of all our counters. So counters have a bunch of little RS latches in there. It's really neat how they'll count. Uh, this is a tieback NAND. So how we cause the tieback NAND to work is we come up here and we keep the inputs high all the time. So I don't need to draw those. So what we'll do is when, when it's latched, So I'm not going to draw the pull-up resistors. I'm just going to draw logic levels. The trouble is I don't know which pins I'm using. I think I'm using this one. Nope, I'm using these. So what I'm going to do is if they're latched, we have two ones. Now when we apply power to this thing, there's no telling how it's going to come up. So you have to put these things into a certain state, right? So most latches, when you apply power to it, they come up in an unknown state. They're either going to come up set or they're going to come up reset. Now, one of these NAND gates are going to be faster than the other. And it will always be faster. So that means on your circuit, uh, it might come up set all the time. But then on the next pit purple over there, it might come up what? Reset all the time. So we say it's ambiguous because I don't know exactly how these things are going to come up. So we have to put them into a state. So let's start off by putting this into a state. Oops. So we'll start off by... Uh, I don't see my drawing over here. I've lost it. So let's say I put this to a... Uh, I come over here and I put this at a 1. And then I put this at a 0. Then what's going to happen? I don't know what's going to happen up on these because I need all highs equals uh, what? The. So I'm going to leave the top one alone. I don't know what's going to happen with that guy, but I do know what's going to happen to this bottom. It's got a low input, so I cannot have all highs. So its output is going to do what? It's going to go high. As soon as it goes high, it crop, cross couples. And then this right here goes to a zero. So if I call this set, then this right here will be the Q. And this guy up here will be the Y. And then this guy right here will be the reset. So the tieback NANs are just opposite, right? Y'all understand that. So a tieback NAND, we set and clear it. We set and reset it with a zero or a low. Tieback knowers we set and reset with ones. So it's just like when you did enables and disables, right? The tieback nans and the tieback knowers were just opposite of each other. So I can come up here and I can return this guy right here. Uh, so I can return this guy right here to a one. So that's the latch state. So what we have to do on this one so on a tieback NOR, we latch it with zeros on both inputs. On a tieback NAND, we latch it with highs. Then how long would it stay right here? 
or you turn the power off. If you turn the power off and turn it back on, it's, it's going to come up random, right? You understand that? But as long as the power is on, this right here is set. That's why the memory in our computer, we call it the, the main memory in our computer, that you got all that memory of, that 8 gigabytes of memory. That is volatile memory. Which means, what does volatile memory mean? It means when you turn your power off, the memory loses its contents. So every bit of the memory, because it uses little latching circuits like this. Now, they're going to come up with ones and zeros in it, right? But they're what? They're random. Every computer would come up different. So this is kind of like the memory. There's a little less to it, because this would be this would be pretty cumbersome. This would this would require a lot of transistors. But it's basically this this is basically the way the memory in your computer works. Exactly. So this would be one storage cell, and we'd only use one of these outputs, by the way. We don't have to use the Q and the not Q. They're available, but we don't have to use them, right? Okay, so how would I reset it? Well, I would bring the reset low. As soon as, as soon as I bring the reset low, then what's going to happen? This output is going to go what? It's going to go high. Then that's going to couple it back. That's going to put a high right there. Right? You understand? And this output would go low. That would cross-couple. That would keep that low right there. Uh, so the reset goes back to a 1. What's going to happen? Well, the bottom one still has two highs, so the output will stay low. The bottom one does not have two highs, so the output would stay high. And this sucker right here is last. Right? You understand? How long would it stay last? How long would it stay? So now it's reset. So how long would it stay reset? Until you set it. So when we say it's last, we don't mean it's a one or a zero. When, we, when I use the term last, it means it's holding the last day. And by the way, I use a different term. So when we say set, what does that mean? That means the Q equals to a what? One. When we say reset, we mean the Q equals to a what? Zero. But I've also used the term clear. <laughs> and that's the same as reset. So a lot of your, a lot of your, a lot of your uh, chips that has this feature, uh, they'll have a pin on it. And it'll be labeled CLR. It won't be labeled reset. It'll be labeled CLR. And we, if, so when we clear the latch, it goes to what? Q goes to a zero. So that's you'll see that term used a lot, especially when you get into the into the sure enough latches instead of these little RS latches. And we use these guys to debount switches and push buttons all over the world. We don't have to do it unless they feed high speed digital logic, right? Like counters. We really got to debount switches that feed counters. So PLC, you can hook up anything to the inputs. So every input on that PLC is debounced inside that PLC, right? You understand? So you flip a snap switch up there, that sucker's going to bounce, and you and you have that uh, feeding a counter inside your PLC. If it wasn't debounced, what would it do? You'd get multiple counts. You got a old limit switch out there that's got a wiper on it. That them suckers bounce all over the place. So you got to debounce all these stuff. And it's either going to be debounced, if it's a computer, it's probably debounced with software. Well, a combination of software and hardware. But if you've got nothing but discrete logic, it's going to be debounced by either a tieback NAN or a tieback NOR. Tieback NANs, what do we do to reset and set and reset them? We set and reset these with lows. Tieback NORs, we set and reset those what with what? Highs. So there's the truth table. I don't know where that came. And here we got to figure this out. So what would happen? Start off, my set is low, my reset is high. Can somebody help me. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to just mark the high, the lows, because this guy right here sets and resets with lows. 
So the tie back NAND sets and resets with lows. So which which one is low, the set or the reset? Okay, so what's going to happen? What's going to happen to the Q output if we set it? It's going to go what? High. Okay, so we come over here. Then we hit that point right there. Set is a high, reset is a low. What's going to happen? It's going to reset, right? Then we come to this point right here. What's going to happen? It's nothing because it's, it's latched, right? Uh, then we come to this point right here. Set makes a little old tiny pulse, but it don't care if it's a little old tiny pulse. As long as that pulse is wider than the propagation delay of the gates. So that means if I'm dealing with standard TTL, we're talking about 10, about 10 nanoseconds. If I'm dealing with an S-series gate, we're talking about 3 nanoseconds, and that's almost what? That's almost unimaginable. We, 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 don't, we have problems with milliseconds. <laughs> and I'm talking about 10 to the minus 9 seconds, right? You understand that? So it would be hard for a pulse to be shorter than that. If I use LS, it's what? About uh, 9, point, 9 point something. It's almost this. So set goes low. Reset is a high. So what is it going to do? It's going to set, right? Then we come over here. Set is a high, reset is a low, so it's going to reset. We're going to come over here. It's going to set is a low, reset is a high. It's going to do this. I'm going to do nothing right there. Uh, then we're going to reset it. And then we're going to set it. But understand, I could do this, right? Y'all understand that? Uh, of course, we wouldn't do that. We're never going to bring these two inputs low at the same time. If we bring them low at the same time, what's the problem? We can't anticipate what's going to happen. Both outputs will go high. If, if both inputs are low at the same time, both outputs would go high. And we can't say if it's set or we can't say if it's reset because your Q is always supposed to be opposite of the walk. Of not Q, supposed to be opposite. When you bring it out, of, when you bring it out, there's no guarantee which way it'll come out. So, we never bring these two in, I'm sorry, we should never bring these two inputs low at the same time. Saying never, never would be the same as saying never run into a telephone pole, right? <laughs> but during normal operation, these two inputs do not go low at the same time. But even if I pulse this low again, it's not going to beat anything because once it's reset, it's what? It's a latch. I mean, it's a memory circuit. So once you store a zero, it's still a zero, right? Uh, so this is what we'd end up with. And in digital logic, if it's not if it's not a computer, if it's digital logic and you got push buttons out there, you're gonna see these circuits. Or if you got switches hooked up to that one. Now if it's a computer one of the big advantages of a computer is that we can replace hardware with programs. We call it hardware with software. So, but the problem with software is it takes a long time. So software is always, always slower than hardware. So the advantage of doing everything with, with digital logic is that it's faster discrete components. The advantage of doing things with programs is it's a lot cheaper. Because we can program ANDs, we can program ORs, we can program NORs, we can program exclusive ORs, we can program all these different logic, and we don't have to hook up a single one. You don't have to hook up a single circuit. But programs take time because you got to run through lines of code, and that don't take so what's the advantage of doing it with discrete, with, with actual gates over doing it with programs? What's the advantage? What? Guys, I just got it out of my mouth. If we do it with logic, it's faster. If we do it with programs, it's cheaper, but it's slower. So computers can never do logic as fast as... There's no way in the world a, a computer can do do a, a logic operation in three nanoseconds. 
even if it's running up in the gigahertz range because it's got to run a program to do it. Software's cheaper. Because you got everything with, with, so once I buy this computer, what with, what can this computer do? It can do logic, it can do math, it can do all this other kind of stuff, but it's doing it with programs. So everything this computer does, I could do it with, I could do it with logic circuits. But that, but if I set up a circuit that adds, then all that circuit would do would be what? It would add. It would do it extremely fast, but all it would do was add. If I set up a circuit to compare, then all it would do would be what? Compare. But my computer, I can write a program to compare. I can write a program to do logic. I can write a program to do all this kind of stuff, right? You understand. So everything this computer does is nothing but logic, but it's done with software, which is really, really neat. So computers are programmable. So our logic, when we do logic with it, we tell it what logic to do. And I don't have to do what? I don't have to wear up all the mans and ors and that kind of stuff. But you do it with a program. Program takes time. So this would be an integrated um, set reset latch. Now we need to know what type it is. We need to know whether it's a we need to know whether it's a tieback NAN or a tieback NOR. Because if it's a tieback NAN, it'll set and reset with zeros. If it's a tieback NOR, it will set and reset with ones. Right? You understand? But you can get these things integrated. But how do I know it's not, number one? How do I know it's a flip flop? Cues and not cues. So as soon as you look at a at the pinout of a, of these rectangles and you see cues or not cues, you know it's some type of what? It's some type of flip flop. And we have several. We have the SRs, which are very simple. Then we have D. We have D flip flops. We have JK flip flops, and uh, those are about it. JKs are interesting. So what does it say? This is figure 10-1. The SR uh, flip-flop shown in figure 1. We connect the S and R to a waveform. Sketch the Q output. Well, I can't sketch the Q. I can't. I can't. Uh, yeah, we can because right here they say what? Say it. Here they're calling it hold. I'm not going to call it hold. Uh, I'm not going to say it's going to hold. I'm going to say it's lag. That's my term I'm going to use. Okay, y'all understand that? So right here when it says latch, hold, I'm going to use latch. That's the term I use. And I'll call these things latches. That's the way I learn. I don't, I don't call them flip-flops, I call them latches. Now the JK, I'll call it a flip-flop because we'll see. We say JK flip-flop, that sucker is neat. If it wasn't for the JK flip-flop, we wouldn't have timers, we wouldn't have counters, we wouldn't have a lot of stuff. So it says it's going to do what? It says it's going to set, right? So this has to be a tie-back nor. Because we're setting and resetting on what? Highs. Yeah. So notice here they say it's what? Reset. So oh, I don't know why. So we're not going to figure that. So this is an example of connecting a bunch of SR latches together. And notice what we have here. So tell me what this is right here. So what am I going to do when I hit this switch right here? Yeah, we're going to reset all of them. So all the not keys would go to zero. I mean, I'm, all the keys would go to zero. Here we're not bringing the not keys out. They're there, we just don't have them wired or anything, right? And then I come over here and I put in a binary number. What's going to happen?
and why is the binary, why is nothing going to happen? So I got a one right there. I got a zero right there. I have a zero right there. I have a one right there. But what, what are we waiting? Huh? We're late. We're, we're waiting on them to let that, that, that get through, right? So we have an enable over here, right? You understand? So I come down here and I touch that. I don't have to touch it. I mean, this could be spring loaded. I can just come over here and just press it, right? Once. Uh, then as soon as I press it, uh, then that'll put a one all down this line right here. That'll let this one go through. That'll let, this will be a zero. Uh, uh, this will be a zero. This will be a one. Uh, this output right here would go to, uh, this output right here would go to a one. Uh, this would go to a zero, zero, one. I come up here. What did we do on this switch? That's a temporary switch. So it's a momentary contact. We just touch it, right? You understand? And then as soon as I let go, then what will this go back to right here? Then this will go back to a zero. So what would happen? So that'd make this go to a zero. This would go to a zero. This would go to a zero. And what's going to happen to my latches? Oh, I didn't put my one there while ago. Sorry. Nothing because it is what? It's latched. It'll hold us forever until I do what? So I reset, but no, I don't have to reset it. I could come up here and put another completely different binary number up here. So I could come up here and I could put another binary number up here. So I could come up here and put this binary number right there. I press the button and then it would do what? It would latch that binary number. So it would latch every binary number I put on the input, right? It would hold them. Now, the only time I would ever reset it is if I wanted to send all the cube outputs to zero for some reason. Uh, we have a lot of latches. We don't ever reset them because we want them to hold information. Right? You understand? So the memory in the computer has no reset. So I store ones and zeros in there. And how long does the zero stay in there? Until I store a lot. Until I store one. How long does the one stay in there? Until I store a zero. When do we ever reset it? Never. <laughs> so I reset my computer. All that memory comes up random. It don't make any difference if it comes up random. I'll start storing information in there. I keep up with where I store the information at. I don't care about the random numbers. So we never reset the memory in the computer. The computer comes up random when we first turn it on, right? You understand? And then we just keep storing information in there. And it holds whatever, it holds the last information I put in there. Yeah, uh, so one bit will hold a zero until I put a watt in there. A one. And it stays on there. So these computers stay on all the time. So that means when you go out and you come back and you bring up there, you know, if you if you left Blackboard running, then, right, then the next person logged up, Blackboard's still going to be in there because those ones and zeros are all latched in there. How long are they latched in there? So you turn it off. But that's why you need to get used to logging off. So if you log off, they don't wipe the memory. They just keep, they just, they just discard where you was at. Does that make sense? And then you start storing into your own storage location. So it means if you log off, then if you had Blackboard running, when you log off, then it'll close Blackboard down. And it'll come up. But all of them keep Windows running until we turn it off. So now uh, we... It won't change, and this is a very common latch right here. This is a lot like the, the memory, but the memory is a lot. This is the way the memory used to be. If you ever, if you ever heard of a memory called static memory, that's what this right here is. So if you if you've heard the term about your uh, your caches, cache L1, L2, L3 caches, those are all static memory. So them suckers are fast. All the rest of it is dynamic memory, which uh, has the same principle, but it works on a lot different concept. So this is what we call a gated SR latch. So that means my S and my R cannot get through unless that enable is what? A one. 
So now we've added it. So this is not what we're storing. What is this guy right here? That's enabling it to be what's stored. Okay, so let's figure out what's going on here. So what's my, so the, the enable, is that is it high or low active? Okay, high active, good. Because that means if I put a low right there, these outputs stay low no matter what. Right? So when I come over here and put that one, then that's going to allow these sets and resets to get through. Okay, so figure this out for me. So what do we start off with? First of all, I'm going to come up here and do this. So if it's not enabled, then it's going to be last, right? You understand. So the inputs can change, and it's going to stay last. So what happens first? What would the Q output do? Yeah, so, yeah, reset. So let's do these in different colors. So what's it going to do? Okay, so I'm going to do my output. So Q will go low. So what's it going to do right there? It's this, it's, it's going to stay latched. The thing is disabled. So if we disable, we don't we don't keep it from unlatching. We just don't let the S and the R's get through, right? You understand? So what's it going to do? It's going to stay wherever it was at. And this is the problem we have. People want to change things every time they see one of the input chains. And they don't look and see what's going on with the rest of the world, right? You understand? So here, what would happen right there? Why? I'm setting it. Good. Thank you. So nothing happens. So the, 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 the control inputs can change, but if, if, it's, if we don't let them get through, they're not going to change the latch. Okay, gang, so what happens right here? Nothing, because we're not setting and we're not resetting. Now, what's going to happen right here? Yeah, Q will go high. Okay. Now, what's going to happen right there? And that's, you're not looking at everything. Look up here. It's going to what? what what's going to cause it to go low? Huh? No, we're not enabled. So this is disabled. Yeah, so that means it's going to stay last, right? Okay, here we're here. What's going to happen right here? It's going to say it, but it's already what? Set. Good. Now, what's going to happen right here? Yeah, it's going to reset, right? And then we're going to leave that alone. I'm not even looking at it. I'm not looking at my two inputs as long as this guy right here is low. Uh, I'm going to come right here. We're telling it to do what? Reset, but it's already what? Reset. And then right here, we're enable. We're telling it to set. It would set. And then it would finish out life that way. <laughs> so first of all if it's not enabled it's last if it's enabled we have the ability to reset it or reset it but we don't have to and that's what's happening here so what happened here we set it but guess what once it's set you can't set it again right you understand that makes sense I know it's almost time to go. Uh, that's, and this is the guy right here that we need to look at for a second before we go ahead. This is called a D time latch. It's a D type latch. You don't see this guy. So this is the D type latch right here. Or a D flip flop. So these are tie back knowers, so these are going to set and clear on highs. 
So if I bring the D to a 1, that's going to automatically put a 1 on the set, but what's it going to put on the reset? 0. So what am I waiting on now? I'm waiting on the enable. So as soon as the enable goes like I, I, then we're going to set it, and Q goes to a 1. And not Q is going to go to a what? 0. Okay, so I come over here and I bring this back to a zero and I bring the D to a zero, which puts a zero right there and puts a one right there. Now, what are we waiting on? Huh? Okay, so this goes to a one, which causes the Q to go to a what? Zero. And causes the not Q to... What do you see about the rate relationship between what we latched and the D input? They're the same. So this is memory right here. So here we say Q follows D when the thing's enabled. So this thing is going to latch whatever's on the D input when we enable this thing. And this is a D-type latch. And that's all there is to it. We have three, we have, we have maybe three pins. I'm sorry. We'll have a D input. We'll have an enable input. It could, if it's got a circle on that, then I mean it's a low active enable. If it don't have a circle, it means it's what? High active enable. Then we'll have a what? Then we'll have a Q. And then we'll have a not Q. This could be called G, it could be called E, it could be called CS, it's called different things by different manufacturers, but D latches all work exactly the same way. And we're going to look at a 7475, y'all can look that sucker up during the weekend. It's the D latch. So we got three. We got RS latches, we got D latches, and then we got JK flip flops. JK flip flops. They're going to love those things. <laughs> and I am laughing. So you, you can understand why we need a, a, a we need the ability to, to store things, right? To hold on things until we got to the need. So this is a, D latches are used a lot, and we'll show y'all some unique features about this about this thing, which is really really neat. So this guy right here would work real well as a D bouncer. Have a good weekend. See y'all Monday. Yeah, I'll see you tomorrow night. <laughs> Tomorrow's gonna be a long day. For me. So tomorrow's going to be a long day for me. Because we have honors and awards to run tomorrow. No. Usually it goes about two hours. They want y'all there at night. They want y'all there. They don't want y'all there at eight. They want y'all there at nine. Oh, the ambassadors. Yeah, you probably need to do that. <laughs> And it starts at 10. So it'll really? probably get over around 12. Really? Man, it's crazy. It's not going to be as bad as Obama, but it'll be just <laughs> better. Uh, at least you'll be able to sit down. <laughs> they, they told us to be there. We was there about 10.30 that morning. Well, I got there at 10. Because <laughs> I got an email to me. And I got a number. And my number was number 800 and something. So there was already 800 and something people up front of me before I got there. But I didn't even need a number, so I, I got a number. I sent, um, I heard a lot of people didn't get it. I sent yeah, maybe. Maybe. They sent a lot of people. They said they'd send them over to uh, the Shores uh, building. We had a, um, they had a jet or something. We had an open and AG gas. Yeah, it was over in the auditorium. Right. I see more. I, I just sent an email to Darren C. Allen. Yeah. I got about uh, just Mark. I've already got like five telling me, you know, and two letters. 
Good to be there after I show up. I'm a horrible one, you know. Where'd you get an award, eh? President's list. <laughs> said I could pick up my ass. You can't. They, sometimes they send them to us. Sometimes they don't. Usually they don't send them to us until, until they... Well, the President's secretary is there. I mean, she's on here. So I still have to leave work early to come here? And get well, not necessarily. Sometimes you get here before five, right? Maybe about five minutes. Well, she usually, well, they take turns staying late. We have two administrative assistants in there. One of, one of them is the career tech assistant, and the other one is the president. So the president has two secretaries. He's got one on each campus. Is, um, my certificate will be available in the dean of students' office. That's the best one. No, that's the dean. No, I see some of the dope here. Well, um, say the whole bill. Uh, I'll read you the whole conversation there. He sent me another email telling me when to be there, blah, blah, blah. I told him I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to make it because I couldn't get off work. My, uh, I've got two guys out already and they won't let me go. <laughs> and, uh, I'll never shut the place down. Like, that's my opinion. It started to rework the Gmail I had an issue. When it comes to change things like that. Just keep that going, I just see all of them. Yep. Okay. So the house of the company is this huge damn bottom of each Uh he said, No sir, you may pick up your certificate from the dean of dean of students office in Bestwork or student life in Birmingham. Let me let us know which campus I'd like to attend. I told him that his response would be telling him what is it will be available in the DM students. Now the Dean of Studies is to be over that section behind the kitchen. Over in uh that building A. Do you know if there are any scholarships that come with being presidents this this There is scholarships. Why? You need to check into that. Because that's one of the that's one of the Scholarships that they have available. They have the President's Scholarship, they have the Vice President's Scholarship. So there's quite a few scholarships available that they give out. Sometimes, in my opinion, the people they give them to is not really deserve because the people that they give it to the best one they want. So, financial aid. I don't know if I call it something the best, but since I came to the school, I've yet to get anything but that. Well, that, that's something that we can look at. I don't know what else they look at for those scholarships. One thing for sure, if you don't go over there and apply for one, you're not going to get one. Certainly. That's what I have been telling that all the time. I don't qualify for financial aid. I said, um, have you applied for it? No. Or, or I don't qualify for financial aid. I said, well, I said, even if they put all that stuff down there, if they got to hire somebody, they're going to hire somebody. So if they say they want all this stuff over there and they can't get somebody that's got all that stuff, then they're gonna hire whatever they have. You don't you don't turn in an application. Even if they giggle a little bit, if you, you get the experience of filling out applications, then I kind of I tell my people, you know, if you see an electronic job in the paper, I have I have a, <laughs> I have a very fancy sounding resume to you every time you think about what I just did. Gotta be very careful with those things. Like I said, I didn't know a lot of a lot of a lot of the people, a lot of the people that read those resumes, no bullshit. I'm well, say it's not bullshit. I have I have applied to it. I just make simple things sound a little bit more, a little bit better. They're not lies though. Yeah, they're not lies. Yeah, they don't want them. They don't want them. Yeah, 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 they
our resume to you.